Good afternoon everyone. Quarter past six here in the UK on Friday the 18th of February and uh, markets are falling. Uh, second big day down in a row. Uh, the S&P uh, is down 47 points uh, and uh, that's in response, I believe Bloomberg have reported that's in response to fighting between Russian and uh, Ukrainian soldiers in the east of the country. I quote Bloomberg. As you can see, uh, short term trend on Victor Vest is down, the underlying trend is down, and we've got a confirmed down in place in the US. That's been in place since last November. And, uh, uh, and nothing much has changed since I did this on Monday. It's been down uh, pretty much all week. Uh, so if I have a look at the S&P, I'm going to uh, just chart the S&P here. And if I pull up the uh, chart, there we are. And uh, uh, this uh, broke down. Now, this is one of my favorite patterns, folks. It's called a, a surprise attack. And uh, uh, that uh, was the situation. I noticed this yesterday afternoon when I was sitting in a meeting with uh, some of Vectivest customers. Uh, uh, that I know exceptionally well out in Oxford and uh, what we had here was two up days and uh, on the second up day it closed in the top 80% of the range and uh, that is a fairly positive sign but then uh, yesterday afternoon right at the open it broke that low and uh, that's what I call a surprise attack. News has come out and, and ambushed the uh, market. And yesterday it fell, and it fell uh, fairly uh, quickly without a great deal of fuss. Uh, this one uh, was exactly the same thing. Uh, that's two up days, closed right at the top. Uh, and uh, it looks in hindsight as if it broke cleanly, but it didn't. It broke went right up to there, nearly ran the stops. I actually got stopped out on that, lost 20 points on that, and I made it back again uh, as it fell. Uh, I just made the, tr I, I cleared my loss. So uh, I've been short in this, and as you can see, the next level uh, is that I think is important will be 78% of this. Uh, and that's at 4,305 on the uh, intraday chart. And that's where my target is on that position. Uh, it was taken, uh, I'm going to show you the intraday chart in a second, but it was taken mostly on that surprise attack. Those surprise attacks have been working for me for, for a very, very long time. That's a surprise attack there. Uh, has to break, has to break that low uh, on the next day. Not the day after that or the day after that. Then the surprise is gone. Uh, they can still work, but the surprise has gone. Don't work as often. Uh, so, and and you, I do take them in context as well with the general market. But uh, this level was 62% of that, and it made a little double top up there. Uh, that was two two points underneath this point. So. Uh, that was a good one. I felt that was worthwhile taking as well. Surprise so attacks rarely let you down, and otherwise say that uh, under uh, caution, uh, there's a probability uh, to everything. So um, uh, let's see how this goes. But certainly 4305, and I'm going to call it quits for the week. I don't need to, that much uh, to keep me going. Uh, the uh, general market falling like this. That uh, one position that I've got in the US, CF, a fertilizer company, it's just about in the money and it's busy trying to get through a new high. It doesn't stand a chance in hell of getting through that new high, I don't think, until this uh, uh, market uh, has, uh, has corrected. And certainly down below these lows, uh, there's a heap of volume traded at these lows. If you go back for a while, you can see there's a huge level here over the, since last August. An awful lot of volume traded down around there, and I think I pointed this out uh, in this week uh, where we uh, went down and we held the 4,300 level. Uh, uh, that was the biggest week volume wise in, uh, in a very long time, in a couple of years at least. So, uh, markets will make a decision for us at 4300. Below 4300, there's an awful lot of fresh air. I think from an LT perspective, we have to count this one, one, two, three. This must be a four, although it's a very deep wave four. 
uh, uh, but it's still a wave four, and this must be a wave five that we're in. So uh, if we do take out the cats and scare the cats underneath this low, then with any luck, uh, we're going to get uh, a... a nice push up nevertheless five waves down is impulsive and that would lend weight to those people that say that any push up is in fact a counter trend rally so uh, uh, let's deal the cards that were uh, given uh, as they come to us but uh, uh, it's starting to look uh, a little bleak over the next couple of days let's see what happens uh, down around here. The uh, trend on VectorVest has been down. Uh, the main trend for position traders has been down since November, since the last week of November, folks. Uh, so uh, in the UK, well, doesn't look much different, does it? Uh, UK is off a third today, or at least the big index. The FTSE is off a third today. Uh, it was off 66 points yesterday, 30 points today. So I don't see much change here. Uh, and everything is down. I'm still holding the same positions, but uh, I've been at this long enough to get quite excited uh, because I can see a great deal of opportunity in the market if and when the market does turn. And it will turn. It may take a day or two or a month or two yet, but it will turn. And I can see a great deal of opportunity. The results that came out in JD Sports this, uh, this morning uh, where the uh, advice was that their sales are well ahead of forecasts. I know people are worried that if uh, the cost of living goes up, that uh, people won't have enough money to buy uh, expensive trainers. Uh, certainly, uh, I know that my two boys prioritize uh, pr uh, expensive trainers above absolutely everything else. Uh, so uh, maybe that'll keep them uh, running. Uh, the other worry about JD Sports, of course, is that the, the man who's made it happen uh, is just about to retire. And, and many institutions are saying that he's a one-man band. And we, JD Sports could end up like Manchester United after Sir Alex left. Uh, let's hope not. It's been an outstanding investment for me over the years. And uh, I want to get back into the stock at what I feel uh, are uh, really, really great prices coming up. And there's lots like that. Games Workshop looks like that. Uh, uh, Volex looks like that. Uh, Lion Trust Asset Management looks like that. So some great opportunities coming up uh, in stocks at bargain prices. Kainos. Uh, looks starting to look like that, although it's still very overvalued, but growing uh, significantly. So uh, don't get upset. Uh, just look on this uh, I, uh, as a opportunity to get in at uh, fairly good prices. I'm sitting at less, slightly less than 30% invested in four or five stocks, and um, I've got over 70% in cash. And uh, when the market uh, bottoms out, I, I should be buying undervalued stocks, uh, stocks that are growing their earnings strongly and reasonably safely uh, when they turn the corner and print a vector vest by recommendation. Uh, that's what I do and I have no intentions of changing that. Look forward to seeing the vector vest customers on Monday afternoon at half past one. Uh, take care of yourselves. Bye.